Hello, it's James from xrobots.co.uk. This is part 47 of my Iron Man Hulkbuster inspired build. There's quite a lot more round the front of it. Last time I was continuing getting panels on the back. So today we're gonna to continue and hopefully flesh out these back doors so that they look like something. But let's take a closer look. These are the doors that I built last time which uh, stay parallel as they come open. So they've got four bar links. And these are mounted on an entirely 3D printed frame in the back of the suit that's really strong. So I did quite a lot of 3D printing last time and built this large structure. These do actually shut all the way, but they're probably gonna shut to about here. And I've got these curved pieces installed to start mounting the uh, frame on at the back. And we've got this slight gap, which is characteristic of Hulkbuster's back. It's gonna be less pronounced on mine. Obviously each side we've got some sort of boosters, some light up sections. And as we move up the suit, there's some more panels that come up to meet the shoulders. And these are the levers that operate the helmet, but I quite like to encase that. So it's got a kind of higher back on it there. Um, we can attach some parts to these but they probably need to be removable so that I can get to the mechanisms that lift the shoulder pods at some point, which probably need looking at again in all fairness, but we'll leave that for another time. So let's have a look at what we're gonna do with these back panels. I've printed a whole bunch of curved pieces, which are a bit like the curves that are on there already. Only these have got a little crank in the bottom so they can be attached with solvent welds to the existing ones. So we'll pull all these brims off and see where they fit. I'm fitting these new pieces this way. So I get this curved back on the door and these go all the way up the other curved pieces. So I've got eight in total, two for the top and two for the bottom, which I haven't attached yet on each side. I'm using solvent welds. So I've got some acetone in a pot here with some black ABS dissolved in it. And we'll just use a little bit of that on the edges here and the same on the other part. And that makes effectively a solvent weld. So it's chemically welding those together by dissolving the plastic. So those are attached and that works pretty well. Um, and that's the basic contour. I've also put this piece on, which you can't quite see, but if I move the camera, you can. And that is where the rest of this contour meets up to the top that goes up to the rest of the back of the head there and covers the shoulders. So that's my basic structure. Now on these, I've started to piece together some other pieces. So I've got four of these, which will be painted silver. And these are kind of a uh, kind of elliptical offset thing. And these are gonna make up my four big kind of jet repulsor things on the back. So I've got four of those to paint up. They're gonna be stuck on the outside of the skins and obviously they'll have lights on. And I've got that sort of indented bit in the middle there I need to still work out. Um, there's gonna be more pieces that light up at the sides. There's also two pieces, which I think are gonna be fitted. So as the door opens, they stay still. And then there's a gap in the frame that comes round and they're, they're sort of fitted in there. So I'm gonna try and place those first before I get the skins on. And those I think are gonna be fitted to this frame somewhere so they don't actually move with the doors. Here's one of those vents. So there's one for each side and I think they're going to sit just here um, so they stick slightly out of the skins and I think I'm going to fix these in place as I say so as the door opens they stay there and they cunningly fit in between this hole here as it moves. So I may well actually get some foam on this now and skin it up, try and make that cut out and have some sort of edging on it and some other things on the panel. We'll see if we can make a bracket to hold that in place. Got two bits of uh, foam floor mats that I've just cut out there to make the back doors. Obviously they go that way around with a gap in the middle. So I need to shape these up with a heat gun, get those stuck on and we'll fit the other parts around them.
Got one panel installed there, so we just need to stick the other one on the other side and then we can start fitting the bits and pieces to it. All right, so I've got my two back doors attached. Now I need to mount these things up. So that's gonna go there, but slightly recessed. So this comes away and leaves it behind. So in fact, it's going to go behind. So what I'm gonna do is cut a piece out for this and then we'll make a bracket that fixes this to the stationary parts. There's my cutout that this will mount in. And then I need to make sure this can stay stationary and this fits back between these things. Here's a rather unexciting bracket which is going to sit in there so the piece facing us now goes on the back of that vent and those two other stick parts sticking up and down go in between the hinge parts on each side. So uh, we'll get a couple of those printed and then we'll stick those on and then I think I'm going to work on the middle part where the doors come closed. Here's the piece I just printed and that's going to wedge in there and be solvent welded in between these two hubs. And then this piece, which I've now, now painted silver, is going to mount onto that as well. And that should allow the door to open around it. Uh, but I need to basically place this door correctly and work out where exactly the end stop is so that I can place this correctly and get them the same on both sides. So we need to put the piece in the middle, which is where the doors shut on each other. So this is the part that goes between the back doors, the blue parts. The green and red parts are the pre-existing curves and brackets that hold those door hinges and currently shape the foam. Between there there's a gap and that's where the door opens, so this is going to be split into four parts, mainly for printing. And of course it splits in the middle so it can be opened and um, up and down so that I can get them on the print bed. And these are all totally symmetrical parts. So there's going to be some more details added onto these but um, those are going to be stuck on later. There's also a kind of bigger piece that goes over the top, which is going to be part of the back of the head, and possibly at the bottom when I come to do that. But for now, the parts are quite simple. We'll get those shapes attached, and then we can put end stops on the doors and continue to flesh it out. Right, here they are. They're fairly sizeable prints, actually. These are all printed in ABS. So, um, as you may know, ABS shrinks as it cools, which causes some warping. Um, the Lulzbot Tazes have got really good heated beds, which uh, mitigates that to some extent. We can see there is a bit of warping on the corner there, where it's lifted off the bed during the print and a tiny bit there. But um, obviously this is right in the middle, so this is basically where they get stuck together and stuck onto the existing brackets. So in fact, um, the top of them is absolutely fine. Um, I am gonna make some other detail parts, as I mentioned, to cover this seam line, and also some various other features up and down. So those are gonna look fine from the outside. Here's the basic layout of the back now. So I've painted these bits gold, and I've obviously put these vents on that are painted silver, and I've mounted these. So now as the door opens, this actually stays put. We'll look at it from another angle in a minute, and these open right out. I've put some end stop blocks in here which stops this from closing too far so you can't quite see it but these doors stop just in the right place now. I think the basic profile of this thing looks okay back to front, obviously it's going to be quite a big hunchback and we've still got a bit to do behind the helmet there but um, on the whole I'm pretty happy with the way that looks and there's definitely enough access to get inside. I want to do the piece that comes up on the back here, that's the hunchback that attaches to this bracket fits on the helmet and um, you may remember when I made the helmet and I did all these um, formed pieces of plastic I also tried one in floor mat I almost managed to form a dome in this floor mat so I'm going to cut a section out of that and stick it in there so um, we'll get rid of the corners and things but we can get a kind of dome thing that comes up behind the helmet and I'll make some flat pieces that go on here which are slightly curved up the back and that will give me sort of three or four or five different layers so we haven't just got one massive flat piece We've got kind of depth to it that we can stick all those detail parts on later on. I'm pretty much freehanding this. I've drawn a line that's a kind of contour and I'm just going to vaguely cut um, along it. Try and get the bottom edge there. Maybe not completely along it, but 
whatever I think looks good and I'll, I'll offer that up. We'll see how it fits and I'll probably trim bits off it till it does and then we'll work on the top corners as well. So here's the piece that goes mainly behind the head here, which is going to be fitted on there on this bracket. I've just got to be quite careful that my head mechanism still works, and that's these two levers. But fortunately, they actually move down out of the way when it's open, so they move away from this. And that means I should be able to put this in, and I shouldn't have too many issues. They do touch it, but I don't think that's going to be a problem. So there we go, I've got the doors working now. There is a slight gap at the top, but that won't really be visible. So that leaves me plenty of space to get in. So we should be good with that. And it shuts up fairly neatly. What I now want is a piece to cover each kind of shoulder blade, if you like, here. So I want to come up at an angle and come over this bracket and head up here and back down behind this. So that piece is going to be removable so I can get to the actuators in the shoulders. Um, this piece of electronics is temporary, so that will go eventually. That controls the helmet. I'll be building a proper control system, but I still need to really get in the back here, be able to get to these motors and things. So I'm going to make removable pieces for now, um, whether they get permanently fixed in the future is another matter, but for now well, I still need access to the parts. I've drawn a few scribbles on this piece of foam, you can just see here and here, and then I'm just going to basically get this ruler and um, kind of cut this to shape. I did actually help hold this up to the suit and draw these lines on, so hopefully they're vaguely in the right place at least. That should give us the rough shape, and we'll shape it up with a bit of heat and make a nice bracket for it, and we should be good. They go about here, slightly higher though, and that gives me several sort of layers here where different things happen. Obviously when this opens I've got a cutaway piece here so it doesn't get in the way, and when the shoulder bell is on, or the uh, rest of the arm I should say, we've got that kind of characteristic cutout on each side, I don't know if you can just see that, uh, which basically looks like it's where the top of the arm goes. So we need to get the arms on really, and they've got no backs on them at the moment, so next time I'm going to be putting the arms on. For now I think that's an okay kind of shape. I printed these things, which are little stilts, to go on the back of these panels. So these are going to be hot glued onto the panel and then I'm going to temporarily use double sided tape to tape this onto the frame so that I can take it off again later to get access. Um, so for now they're going to be temporarily mounted and if I need to take them off I can and in the future we can permanently attach them. I will just stick that in there. Should be just the right amount of clearance. Pretty happy with how that's turned out. Really all I've done is stuck some foam on and made a few large chunks of 3D prints. But I'm pretty happy that that's pretty much the flesh of the back and it really feels like I'm getting there in terms of finishing it off, cosmetically at least. 
So next time I'm going to come back and detail this up by putting the panels on, doing some painting and weathering, but also putting some really bright LEDs in these vents, uh, putting quite a lot of detail on here. I want a transparent diffuser, but also with some kind of mesh over that. Um, and obviously there's lots of detail to go on the rest of the parts. So don't forget to subscribe to my channel for more updates on this project and my other projects, including lots of Star Wars projects. There's also some social media links in the description to this video, including my new Instagram account. So check there for pictures of sneak peeks and previews of other projects.